Hello friends, this video on chemical bonding part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 19. So, there are different types of overlapping in the nature of covalent bond. And there are generally two types of uh, overlapping of bond, I can say. Uh, one is the sigma bond. In sigma bond, we have SS overlap and SP overlap and PP overlap also. For pi bond, we have only PP overlap. We'll see all this sigma bond and pi bond. Just understand that we have two types of bond, sigma bond and pi bond. Sigma bond can happen in three different overlap case and pi bond can happen in one overlap case. And please note that this is all covalent bond. It's a non-ionic bond. It's all covalent bond. Right? Let's discuss the sigma bond. Sigma bond is formed by end-to-end -end or hand-on overlap. It's a head-to-head head to head overlap head to have head overlap of orbitals along internuclear axis please note head to head overlap along internuclear axis correct and the sigma bond allows free rotation and cylindrically symmetrical about internuclear axis we'll explain this the sigma bond as i told of three types SS overlap so if I have an SS orbital and head on if they overlap they becomes SS overlap SP if I have an S orbital and I have P orbital if they overlap head on they become SP orbital and if you see in, in this case also if you see this is my internuclear axis so if you see this is cylindrically symmetric about this internuclear axis you take any point it will all be symmetric that will be three dimensional. Maybe once we will take the three dimensional shapes, or when we will have uh, we have three dimensional animations with that, it will be pretty clear to you. For PP or, or overlapping, also if you see, there's a P orbital, P orbital, it overlapped like this. There's a head on overlap actually, and if you see, this is cylindrically symmetric and it allows free rotation because. This can do it. I think we can take an example where we can show it allows free rotation on the motion. So let's take this free rotation thing. This is the three dimensional of uh, P orbital. See P orbital overlapped with P orbital. Now if you see this is my internal nuclear axis and everything is symmetric along uh, this, uh, this axis. See so if you see you take these points, any of these points, this is all be symmetric. And this is the Overlap. This is a p orbital. This is a p orbital. Head on overlap, right? So if you see, for example, my methane, methane, the formation will explain later. Just understand this how methane is forming. So I have this uh, pp uh, overlap. This is my pp overlap, and then this uh, hydrogen is attached to this. This is the actual shape of methane we have. So if you take this orbital here like this. So everything is symmetrical about this orbital and these these guys this can rotate actually so we can rotate you can flip this for example if you see this methane you can rotate this it won't break it can rotate because this has become an axis now and these three can rotate it can rotate like this this is my methane actually c2x6 but the actual uh, structure of methane as proposed by balance bond theory. We will explain more in this when we explain the different kind of hybridization. Just understand this, the methane looks like and you can actually rotate this. this. This whole methane can, this particular right, this thing can rotate. And this is my internuclear axis. This is a p orbital. And it can rotate. Now we will discuss pi bond. So in pi bond, the overlap is such way that excess remains parallel to each other. Right? And these axes are perpendicular to internuclear axis. We'll show you an example. So if you see here, there are two p orbitals, and the way they are combining is not head-on. This is like this, they're combining like this. Right? There's an overlap. And their axes are parallel anyway. You see one more example in this case also, right? Their axes are always parallel. They are parallel to each other, right? 
and this is the weight overlap and if you see the weight overlaps it 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 form a saucer like uh, cloud this is saucer like cloud it forms it forms saucer like cloud it, it overlaps like this it forms saucer like cloud so if you see it's sideways overlapping so in earlier case we had this uh, two orbitals it overlapped head to head right so in this case we have two orbitals and it overlaps side to side this is pi bonds weaker bond actually because the overlap extent is little less and this is my sigma bond this is pi bond this is denoted by the symbol sigma and this is by symbol pi so in pi bond there is no free rotation we will take one example so if you see in this case uh, this is my ethene c2h4 so if you see here these this was my sigma bond head to head and this is my pi bond so if you see this will form bond like this this will be one bond right this will be a cloud like this if you see this forms a cloud like this correct it's a cloud like this so if it is a cloud like this it will restrict the rotation it won't be able to rotate you can't rotate this because see if it is like this if you have something like this right you can rotate it but if you have something like this where you have you are merging these right you can't rotate because there is two bond there is only single bond sigma bond so it allows free rotation but the moment you talk about this pi bond because this is a pi bond now right you talk about pi bond it forms a cloud like this saucer kind of cloud like this and this will restrict the free rotation correct see this is my sigma bond and this is my pi bond this is one pi bond actually so it 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 looks like uh, from the figure it's two but this is one pi bond this is one pi bond actually so if you see the structure it will be like this so in this case this is my the first is my sigma bond and the second is my pi bond this is my sigma bond one bond and this is my pi bond and actually if you see all these bonds are my sigma bond because this is a sp overlap sp overlap sp overlap sp overlap right this is a p orbital p orbital this is all sp overlap this is all s this is all my sigma bond these are all sigma bond and this the, this is my pi bond and this doesn't allow free rotation this is my shape so let us discuss the strength of sigma and pi bond as i told the strength of the bond depends on the overlapping extent so in case of sigma bond the overlapping is more large extent so the sigma bond is stronger sigma bond is stronger than pi bond right and we always know that pi bond is formed in addition to sigma bond the first bond will always be sigma bond for example in case of ethene also the first bond that got formed was sigma bond and then only we got this pi bond right the, if you have a pi bonds are there sigma bond has to be there because the first bond that is formed is sigma bond in addition to that we get pi bonds right and pi bond is always present in the molecule which has double or triple bond for single bond it's always sigma bond sigma bond single bond for double or triple bond we have pi bond please note sigma bond single bond for double and triple bonds we have pi bonds so let's compare sigma bond and pi bond so this is my all uh, sigma bond on the left side the sigma bond is formed by the overlap of orbitals along the intermolecular axis if you see this is my sorry intermolecular axis so overlap happens along this line so i get this type of bonds right <coughs> and this is formed by sideways overlap this is my uh, it, to intermolecular axis they are always parallel to each other the side base overlap this is formed by ss sp and sp overlap you see ss sp and spp overlap so this is pp overlap and this is formed only by pp overlap this is strong this is weak in this case the electron cloud is symmetrical about the line joining two nucleus this electron cloud is cylindrically symmetrical actually cylindrically symmetrical and this electron cloud is not symmetrical if you see this 
the electron cloud is not symmetrical about this uh, this line here. You see, right? This this place is not symmetrical, right? Somewhere you get something else. Here you get something else. Here you get electron cloud. In the case, in this case here, you see, you go in any direction, you get the same electron cloud. So it, this has one electron cloud. You see, in all the case, one electron cloud. This has two electron cloud. One up, one down. In this case, the free rotation is possible. In this case, the free rotation is not possible. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.